It might not seem obvious at first, but there are many different ways to move objects in SketchUp. Let me just go through them. In the first method, you just arbitrarily move an object by pre-selecting it, clicking a point to pick up the object, and click another point to set it down. If you want to be accurate, you can use numbers. I'll pick this up, move it in the red direction, and set it down. And then I'll type in two feet. SketchUp will adjust the position accordingly. I have an opportunity right now to change my mind and say, well, actually I want it to be one foot eight, and SketchUp will make the adjustment again. But if I deselect the Move tool, let's say by pressing the space bar, I no longer have that opportunity to adjust the transformation of my object. So it's just a one-time only opportunity, immediately after you move the object. Alternatively, you can pick up the object, move the mouse over, and then type in a distance, two feet. That means SketchUp will automatically set the object down for you, so there's no need to click again. Another way to move objects is to avoid numbers entirely and use geometry that you already have in the model. For example, with this joist selected, I'll click this point to pick up the object, and I'll click this point to set it down. This allows me to transform an object a known distance using geometry that's already there. SketchUp doesn't support polar coordinates, like you can use in AutoCAD, but you can accomplish the same type of thing by separating the steps into two parts. So for example, let's say I want to move this joist over three feet at a 45 degree angle in the red-green plane. I can't do that directly, but I can draw a line which will represent that transformation, and then move the object according to that line. So let me just draw a line here in the red direction, and I'll make it three feet long, and then I have to do a separate step to rotate it, the angle that I want. So I'll press Option R for Rotate, and I'll rotate this, the angle that I'm interested in, which is 45 degrees. And then I'll select this object and move it over from here to there. This object is currently grouped. I'm going to zoom it on the screen by pressing Shift Z, and then I'll double click on the object to go into the group. Now that I have access to the actual edges and faces of this object, I'll move without pre selecting. So, in other words, I just press M. Now, if I hover the cursor over this edge, I can actually deform this edge by moving it independently of the other edges and faces. Alternatively, I can grab a single vertex and deform it, and SketchUp will make the necessary breaks in the geometry to make sure that everything remains connected. Let me just undo a few times to go back to the original joist geometry. I'll exit the group by clicking off to the side and zoom previous by pressing Ctrl Z. The Move tool can also be used to transform inner faces and inner edges. So for example, let me zoom in in this area and take a look at this face. I'll use the Offset tool to create a set of inner edges. That subdivides the geometry into two faces. I'll pre-select this inner face, press M for the Move tool, click a point off to the side to pick it up, and then I'll press the up arrow to lock in the blue axis inference. SketchUp automatically created those corner edges so that everything remains connected. This is auto fold mode. If you press the command key, you toggle out of auto fold mode, and then you're able to transform these inner edges and face independently. I can set it down over here, and when I do, notice that the edges become bold to indicate that they're no longer internal edges. This is just a face like the other one is. There's a Ruby script that adds something to the overall move experience in SketchUp. It's called the JS Move Tool. It's named this for its author, Jan Sandstrom. I'll select this object and choose the plugin. I actually have this mapped to Option M in my shortcuts. The way it works is you have to enter a distance first. I'll type in 6 inches and press Return. Now I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move the object in set jumps. I'm using the left arrow here, the up arrow, the down arrow, the right arrow, and so on. I'll type in a different increment. Let's make it two feet so the jumps will be larger. Move it left with the left arrow, right arrow, up arrow, down arrow. And if I hold down the option key, I can actually move it up and down in the blue axis. So in this way, you can bump objects all around in six different directions using the arrow keys. To use this script, let me just show you. Here's where you can find it. And it's divided into two parts based on the platform that you're on. 
And I actually had to change this for the platform that I'm on. I think originally the script was for the PowerPC processor, and I'm using an Intel processor on my Mac running Leopard. I had to change this here, and I didn't really know what to put here. The way I discovered it was by typing in this variable in the Ruby console. Let me show you how that works. I go to the Ruby console and type in Ruby underscore platform and then press return and it tells me exactly what to put there. I just copied and pasted this into the script. Now it works on the Mac Intel processor. Maybe you've noticed there's no copy command in SketchUp. Instead, there are copy options within the Move and Rotate tools. And the idea for this is simple. You want to start moving or rotating and then decide while you're doing that if you want to leave a copy behind. It just lets you keep your options open a little bit longer. And that's a good thing. So for example, I'll select this object, press M for Move, click a point to pick it up, move the cursor over, but before I click a second point to set it down, I'm going to press the Option key. That leaves a copy behind. Notice that the cursor has a little plus symbol on it to indicate that I'm making a copy. Now I'll click to finish the move operation. I still have the opportunity to change the distance. I'll type in 2 feet, and SketchUp will adjust the position of the copy. The original remains behind. The Move tool can be used to multiply copies or to divide them along a known length. So for example, I'll move this joist from its lower left corner to the endpoint of this line, and then I'll delete the other one. I'll pre-select the joist, press M for Move, pick it up, press Option to leave the original behind, and click to set it down. At this point, I'd like to adjust the distance, so I'll type in 18, Return. Now I'd like to multiply the copies. Right now there's only one copy. I'll type in 4x to make 4 copies, or 3x, or 2x. So I have the ability to change the number of copies at this time. Of course, if I select another tool, this opportunity is done. So let me just type in 4x again, and notice that I have 5 objects. So it doesn't count the original. It's only counting the copies in this array. Another way to go is to divide the objects along a known length. So to do this, I'm going to press M for the Move tool. This time I'll pick up the object from its lower right corner, press the Option key to leave the original behind, and click over here on this endpoint. Now I'll type in 4 divided by, and SketchUp will automatically calculate the spacing that's needed to set in 4 equal increments. So I have 5 objects, but 4 increments of space in between them. I can play around with this. I can say 6 divided by and just see how that looks. So this is a really wonderful way of spacing things like studs or joists or any type of regular repetitive pattern. You can either do it by a number of copies given a set increment using the X operator or you can copy something a known distance and then divide that into a number of equal increments and let SketchUp do the math for you. To explore the Rotate tool, I'd like to build a project. Begin by going into the top view by pressing Command-1. Activate the Polygon tool by pressing N. Click the origin point, and then click a point along the green axis. Set the radius at 22 feet. Type 12S to create a 12-sided polygon. Press the spacebar to activate the Selection tool. Select the face and delete it. Select the polyline, representing the 12 equal edges, and press Command-G to group it, so that we can protect the edges. Use the Polygon tool again, and click this top vertex. Click another point, and then set the size at 18 inches. Type 4S to create a square polygon. Double-click to select the face and its polyline edge, and then press G to create a component. I'll call this Post. Let's not worry about the complexity of components yet. Just give it a name and click Create. 
Activate the Rotate tool by pressing Option R. There's a protractor attached to the cursor. The first part of any rotation is to set the axis of rotation. In this case, it's the origin point, so I'll click right here. The next part of a rotation is to pick up the object. I'll pick it up right here at the center of the post. The next and final part of the rotation is to click a point to indicate the angle that you want to rotate in. Before I do that, however, I'm going to press the Option key to leave a copy behind. It works just like the Move tool in that respect. So now I'll click this point to set down the copy, and then I'll type in 11x to multiply the copies by 11. So now there are 12 posts or 11 copies. I'll go into a 3D view and press J to use parallel projection. Press the spacebar to activate the selection tool. Double click on a component to go inside of it. Use push pull to pull it up. I'll bring it up to 13 feet. And then click outside to close the component. The beauty of components is anything you do to one of them happens to all of them the same. Next, we'll build a beam that goes across here. To do that, I'm going to draw a line here. Notice that I can't really use the rectangle tool here. If I try that, the rectangle is oriented with respect to the axes. It might be helpful in this case if we reorient the axes by pressing Option A. I'll set the origin point of the new axes here. I'll make the red axis go down along the post, and the green axis go along this edge of the post. So now our axes are coincident with this line. I can now use the Rectangle tool, and it will work along these new axes. I'll use Push-Pull and pull this down a distance. I'll make it 2 feet. And then I'll Push-Pull in about 6 inches. Over here, I'll do the same thing, 6 inches in. Triple-click on the beam and press G to create a component. I'll type Beam and create that component. Now I'd like to rotate that component around the structure, but to do that I need the origin point back. So I'll reset the axes by pressing Shift A back to their original location. Now I'd like to go ahead and rotate out a copy. I'll select the beam, press Option R for Rotate, Click the center of rotation at the origin point. Start the rotation along the green axis, it doesn't really matter. And start rotating. I'll press the Option key to leave the original behind. I could make a single copy like this, or I could go to another post and choose the proper angle that I want to create a copy, like this. And then I could say 2x to make an additional copy. Another approach is to divide the number of copies amongst a full circle. So to do that, I'm going to select this object, activate the Rotate tool, click the center of rotation, click a point to start the rotation, the Option key to make a copy, and then type in 360 to go full circle. So now I have the original and the copy coincident. Now I can type in a number that I want to divide equally. So I'll type in 3 divided by to give me 3 equal copies along a full circle. SketchUp does the math. I can say 4 divided by and see how that is, or 6 divided by. I like this arrangement. Let's stick with it. Now because I made this array of 6 beams based on the full circle, I'm left with a copy on top of the original. You can just see that here. I'm going to leave that there just to demonstrate something to you. I'm going to use the Move tool with this one object selected. When I put the cursor over it, you'll notice that there's two red pluses on each edge. These are rotate opportunities for you within the Move tool. If I click on one of these pluses, you'll notice that there's a red protractor that appears centered on the object. If I click right here on this plus, I have the chance to actually rotate that. In this case, this might be interesting if I go ahead and make this unique so that it's no longer connected to the other components. Then I can double-click on it, make it smaller without affecting all of the other beams. 
And I can do the same thing here. Pull it up. Pull it over. And then just push this back. So we have a post spanning this open space. Let me just hide that for now. Let's say for sake of argument that I want to create a circular rod that spans between these beams. To do so, I'll draw a line from this intersection to the other one. Then I'll zoom in in this area. To make a rod, I'll be using the Follow Me tool. It's necessary to make a profile shape that's oriented with respect to this path. So I'll make a circle centered here, and I'll give it a 3 inch radius. To protect that, I'm just going to double click and group it by pressing Command G. Now I need to rotate that so that it's perpendicular to this line. To do that, I'm going to use the Rotate tool, of course, and the center point will be here. But instead of clicking, I'm going to click and drag along this vector. You see, any way I drag, it's a way to orient the Rotate tool. I'm going to drag along this line and then release the mouse button. And that has oriented the Rotate tool so that we can rotate along this axis. Now I'll click along the face here to pick it up. I'll move up 90 degrees and click again to finish that rotation. We rotate it up, but we still need to rotate it 90 degrees in plan. If I come over here, you'll see that the protractor kind of jumps around because it's not sure of which orientation I want. I'd like to lock in this red-green plane orientation. In other words, rotate along the blue axis. So I'm going to hold down the Shift key to lock that inference. And then when I come in here, there's no more of that jumping around. I can just click to set the axis, and then pick it up and move it over 90 degrees. When you go out here, you have finer control because you're further away from the center. If you come in here, it wants to lock to 90 degree angles. You can also hold down the Shift key to lock to smaller increments. So I'll click right here and we have a 90 degree rotation. Now I have it oriented correctly, perpendicular to the path. So I can explode this group, pre-select the path, press F for follow me, and click on the face. It happened to be inside out. I can reverse the face and then orient the face. Now let's say that I want to put a roof on the structure. I'm going to delete these objects for now. Draw a line from this corner point in towards the center. Then I'll pre-select the line and use the Rotate tool. I want to rotate it up to the slope angle. Notice that I don't really have the correct angle here based on the geometry of the post. I'd like to rotate it around the green axis. So to do that, I'm going to change my point of view until I see the green axis appear on the protractor. Then I'll hold down the Shift key to lock that inference. Click right here to set that as the center of rotation. Then I'll click a point to start the rotation. And instead of entering an actual angle value, which you can do, I'm going to enter a slope expression. So for example, let's say it's 6 and 12. That's 6 colon 12. Or maybe I want it to be less steep than that. Perhaps 4 and 12 would be better. Let's try that. So that's 4 inches up and 12 inches over. This is a rise colon run expression. Now I'll just complete the geometry by drawing in a line along the red axis and another line up from the origin point. I'm going to explode this group, which is protecting the 12 sided polygon and have it selected as the path. Press F for follow me and click on the face to create the roof.